Welcome to Inside View, the program where you get a view from the inside. I'm Sarah Lensford, and my guest today is Sheriff Dennis Downham. Hi, Dennis. How are you doing? Good. Good Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you. First of all, what is your background? How did you end up becoming Sheriff of Calaveras County? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I was raised in West Point in oh, here in okay. Calaveras County, and I went to West Point Elementary, Calaveras High oh, School. Okay. Um, uh, basically, after high school, um, I went to the Bay Area uh, and went to work for the Oakland Police Department. Mm -hmm. um, I worked there actually for 21 years, and uh, in 1989, I moved back to the county, uh, generally to be closer to uh, my parents, my wife's parents, who are still here, mm -hmm. and um, went to work as a fraud investigator um, uh -huh. in 1991 here in the county, and. Ended up running for sheriff in 94 and assumed the office in 95. Okay, so you've been sheriff for 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, just just uh, last January, I started my fourth term. Now, how, how has uh, Calaveras County changed since you've become sheriff? Not since you grew up, <laughs> yeah. but since you yeah, became that sheriff. Could, that could be a program all by itself. That's right. Um, actually, um, it, it's changed considerably, uh, certainly growth motivated most of the change, mm -hmm. uh, and, and with growth comes demands on service, um, mm -hmm. uh, and quite frankly it has, um, in the last five years, our calls for service have increased about 250 oh, percent. Really? Um, so, so I guess the, the volume of calls and the types of calls that we're going on um, has changed dramatically in the last uh, 10 years or so. Okay. Do you, do you see the changes as a result of people moving up here and expecting more services? Well, yeah, and a lot of people are coming here from uh, the Valley or the Bay Area where, where a lot of people expect a uh, two-minute response time from their police department, oh, okay. um, uh, having services immediately available. And, and quite frankly, some folks call for things that we never used to get calls for. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I mean, people call us because there's a rattlesnake on the property or uh, there's their eight-year-old child's out of control or, or, okay. or whatever, and, 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 and there are there is just a variety of calls that we, we really never had before that we're, we're getting now, and, and certainly mm -hmm. people get irritated with us because on non-emergency calls, uh, and we've got 1,100 square miles to, to right. take care of, mm -hmm. and sometimes we're a long ways off, so our, mm -hmm. our response times are not what they should be. Now, how many sheriff's deputies do you have? Uh, actually, there are 62 sworn positions in the Sheriff's Department. That includes me to the newest vacant okay. position. Okay. Um, we uh, generally, if our patrol staff is fully staffed, mm -hmm. we will have 26 deputies uh, on patrol. Uh, oh, we never okay. get to that point. Uh, right. right now, I'm seven people short. and. Okay. Um, uh, so we're always having to bring our detective staff or to patrol to work patrol and oh, okay. uh, just to answer calls for services. So. Okay. Now, with the increase in calls for service, obviously it increases the capacity or the need for larger capacity for the jail. So what happens when you can't, when there's too many people? Well, in the jail, so you can't uh, put people in there. We, we had a sheriff named Claude Ballard back in 1986, mm -hmm. and Claude Ballard was the first sheriff that we can find that put to paper the need for a new jail in Calaveras oh, County. Oh, in 1986. 1986. Wow. Uh, in 1992, a court-ordered capacity limit was placed on the jail. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, there was 57, I th no, 58 bed capacity. Um, we've got some grant monies, one thing and another, uh, added a few more beds. Right now we have a 65 bed capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so every day, basically at 5 o'clock, we have to do a count and we cannot be over 65 people. And uh, we generally book somewhere around 75 or 80 people a day. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We don't book that many people mm -hmm. a day, but we will have 75 or 80 people in our jail. So generally at the oh. end of the day, we're 
kicking everybody out over the Magic 65 number. And in some cases, we don't even book them in. We cite them and release them because we know that we'd have to release them anyway. Um, it, it is it's simply not a good situation. How do you decide who to release and who to keep? Uh, part of it, uh, the biggest part of it is, is set up the criteria is set up by the courts. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly it's the, the last people that we would ever turn loose are people that are there on, on violent type mm -hmm. crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is, I mean, certainly misdemeanors go first. Okay. Um, lower level felonies are kind of based on percentage of their sentences served. Uh, there, there's a whole formula that comes, comes into play. But certainly some people will show up there with six months to do and they'll basically uh, get booked and credit for time served and they're gone. Really? And, and we generally run an all felony jail um, mm -hmm. and a lot of people may think that gee uh, you know misdemeanors don't need to be in jail anyway. Well I don't think those people have taken into effect that the people that are there that continually steal things mm -hmm. uh, maybe somebody is get sentenced there for their third or fourth drunk driving arrest those oh. kinds of things those are misdemeanors and we can't keep them. And oh, it's okay. uh, and quite frankly, if if the judge tells someone that they're going to do a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. they ought to serve pretty close to that. Or it really takes the meaning out of our system. Now, I want to go back a little bit to the early '90s when the judgment was handed down. What actually precipitated it to go to the courts? Well, basically, uh, they were housing about 90 people in that jail at that time. Okay. Uh, they had mattresses on the floor. They had mattresses in the hallway. Um, they basically were stacking them in. And, and quite mm -hmm. frankly, there were quite a few during that time period. The, there were a lot of federal lawsuits uh, being filed uh, oh, okay. that were very costly, very intense. Um, the, the administration, the sheriff's department at that time, basically filed a suit against themselves with the local court and the local courts put the capacity limit and that was done to to fend off a federal suit that would have cost oh. us a ton of money <laughs> okay. so so it was uh, even though it sounds weird it's uh, it was a it was a good decision so it it, it kept the federal government it, from coming in yeah okay and you never get away from the feds cheap uh, no <laughs> no, you don't. Um, now, I just want to fast forward a little bit to to what you mentioned about it's basically an all felon jail. What is the difference between a felony and a misdemeanor? Well, generally, a felony uh, you can go to state prison for mm -hmm. it. Uh, generally, a much more serious crime, uh, like for theft, if you steal something of a value over four hundred dollars, it's a felony. If it's under, it's a misdemeanor. Oh, okay. Um, uh, it, it's it's based on the seriousness of your crime. Okay. Now, are you seeing a lot of people coming back in with misdemeanors? <laughs> and then just we, let it. You have to 19, just let them go. <laughs> in 1995, 24 um, percent of the people we released early were rearrested while they should have still been in jail. In 06, oh, okay. that number moved over 30 percent. Um, and. I mean, if you think about it, look at the burden it puts on every element of our justice system. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes more deputy time to rearrest this. There's another victim. Mm -hmm. uh, the DA's office has to deal with it. The probation department has to deal with it. The courts have to deal with it. And these are, are multiple cases that should have never happened, should have never been Just, necessary. There shouldn't have been another victim out there. Okay. Now, ideally, what size jail do you, does Calaveras County need? We had a we had a needs assessment done uh, back in the late nineties. We had it updated uh, uh, about a year ago. Uh, we knew we needed to update it because of the the unexpected phenomenal growth that was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, the needs assessment tells us that we need two hundred and forty beds to get us out twenty years. And uh, you have sixty five. You have a sixty five cap. Yes. Okay. Um, and our current jail was built in 1963, and it was built in a linear design that's very work intensive. If mm -hmm. we had to shut that jail down for whatever reason for 24 hours, empty it out, the state would never let us reopen it. We're grandfathered into everything. The doorways are too small. Um, it's, so anyway, it's dangerous. you can just shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Should I, I gotta, say that on television? <laughs> I've got to have uh, got to have some place to put people. Oh, but, okay. Uh, but it's it's a very unsafe facility. It's it's dangerous both for inmates and staff. Um, 
but mm -hmm. <clears throat> with with people often ask me why don't you just expand the jail we, there's no place to go that place was there originally isn't. that place was originally built to put a, another story on it you know go up two oh, stories okay. real expensive you almost have to <clears throat> have to double your staff but since the jail was built all the building codes have changed and mm -hmm. and nobody would ever allow us to put another story on it okay. um, so but but quite frankly when I put the new addition on back in 98 or 99 of the new eight beds that we got, we took up part of the parking lot, and there's there's just simply there's no room, there's no place to go. Well, it's actually if if people take a jail tour, um, they'll see that where inmates are booked in is not secure. No, the grand jury criticizes us every year for not having a a secure area to bring inmates in. And also, we don't have any secure way to take them to court. We have to walk them outside, and it's and back it's, into the courtroom. Yeah, it's a it's a deplorable uh, situation. But <laughs> if we made that a secure area with the necessary fencing and so forth, we block off access to the basically the fire escape for the courts. Yes. So we can't. <laughs> there, we just there, there's, there's no just way no around way. it. No. So. A few years ago, there was there. It looked like there was no way you would ever get funding for your jail. So, bring us up to speed as to what happened in the last. Well, actually, Under Sheriff Walker was was here just when the state legislature approved uh, an emergency bill. Yeah. And so, what happened with that emergency bill? Well, basically, the <clears throat> the reason the state funding is coming our way is because the state prison system. Is, is severely really, overcrowded. Is, yeah, it has severe, <laughs> severe problems. A three-court panel of federal judges is going to uh, make a decision before very long whether to put a cap or a capacity limit on mm -hmm. on the jail or on the state prison system. Right now, they house about 172,000 people in there. Um, the courts have made statements that there shouldn't be over 140,000 people or 135,000. So basically, oh, okay. they're talking about turning 40,000 state inmates loose. Mm -hmm. um, the state's first reaction was, well, let's push them back to the counties. Uh, there's 23 sheriff's departments in the state or sheriff's offices in the state that have capacity limits on their jails already. County's got no place to put them. Now, are most of them rural counties? Uh, a lot of them are, but okay, some of them, are, some are, of them are, are, are bigger counties, too. Oh, okay. Um, this, so the state the, has a problem. The state, <laughs> the state sheriffs release <clears throat> about 5,000 people a day early in total. Oh, on the state level? On the st so statewide. You, so you add that to the county level, and there's quite a few, no, no. or am I confused? That's just county sheriffs like county me sheriffs. Oh, release, okay. release about 5,000 people every day early. Now, do the, on the state prison level, do they release early as well? No. Oh, they don't? No. So it's just now, they on do the local have, level. They do have a parole uh, program. Well, no politician in his right mind wants to be accused of releasing somebody early. Well, that's true. So, that's uh, true. But they, they don't mind the counties doing it, mm -hmm. but, but, the, but the state's not going to do it themselves. Anyway, the initial plan, um, the state sheriffs objected strongly to it. Mm -hmm. uh, the state decided to look at the entire system the way it should be looked at. Okay. Because there's not one person in state prison that didn't come through a county jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a it's fact just of life. the way it works. And um, they finally recognized that, this, that the, uh, uh, the county jails were in, in serious sh bad shape. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they, they passed AB 900, yes. which provides uh, s several billions of dollars. Uh, one component of it is uh, to fix some of the prison systems, mm -hmm. to, to build more beds on existing prison grounds. Another component of it is to provide money to counties to build local jails. Mm -hmm. The third component is what they're referring to as the reentry program, where they bring people that have about a year left to do in state prison, mm -hmm. they bring them into a smaller, uh, generally about a 500 bed facility, give them some very intense rehabilitation programming stuff, um, and um, 
Well, basically, that's that's the three components. Okay. Uh, the state has told us pretty clearly that if we're if you don't participate in a state reentry program, there's no use to apply for the money because because okay. I mean it's they're putting all the you know it's kind of the stick and carrot theory. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We have worked uh, very hard for the last several months with San Joaquin and Amador County, and. Um, it's basically been approved that the old women's prison down in Stockton yes. will be used as a regional reentry facility for Amador Calaveras in San Joaquin County. Okay. So our people that are being released from state prison early will come to that reentry facility for their last six months to a year or whatever mm -hmm. and get some very intense uh, programming. Our commitment is that our mental health, our drug and alcohol people, whatever is necessary, uh, will go basically introduce themselves and so those people can kind of make a seamless transition back to their county of commitment, know who the mental health worker might be or know who their drug and alcohol counselor might be and, okay. and try to keep them on track. So I, I, personally I think it's a great plan, mm -hmm. but if we're looking specifically at jail construction, mm -hmm. We've met our commitment for that element, and we will get the points for a reentry facility. Okay. So. Now, as far as reentry goes, are those people reentering back through that facility? Are they actually come? Did they come out of Calaveras to begin with? Is um, that how that works? It is absolutely mandatory that only those people will have to go back to their county of commitment. If they oh. were sent to prison from Calaveras County, they will come back to Calaveras County. They're oh, generally okay. our home people, but we're not getting them from anywhere else. Okay, now where's the money coming from for the reentry program? That is all part of AB 900, the state legis okay. um, legislation. Did they move money from a different... No, my understanding is is it's a type of bond that the legislature can approve and sell themselves, basically. Oh, okay, because there was some confusion about where the money was coming from, right, I know, so at the time. It's all state money. At this point, at this point, uh, for the local jail construction, 25% mm -hmm. of that will need to be local money. Okay. Uh, everything else is coming from the state. And the reentry piece of it is 100% state dollars, 100% state money. Now, there are already programs in the Calaveras County Jail that are similar to sort of reentry programs. This is what well, I've heard. <laughs> well, there used to be. Uh, there used to be. Mm -hmm. we, we used to run a really good adult tutoring program. Mm -hmm. um, we send work crews out. Uh, we had a variety of stuff. We had a lot of drug and alcohol uh, uh, counseling going on. Mm -hmm. But quite frankly, most of those programs, uh, even our drug and alcohol rehab programs here in the county, our jail has gotten to the point where people are refusing to go to them. So it's, it's taking a lot of meaning away from it. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> when you walk into the judge and the judge says, okay, you can go, you can go to this program, you're going to pay a fine, you're going to be mm -hmm. on probation, you're going to do these things, and the defendant looks at the judge and says, nah, roll it into jail time for me, because they know they're going to get booked and released. So, so they it's, figure it's, it out. It, oh, absolutely. You ought to, any Monday morning, you ought to go over and see the people lined up to turn themselves in. If the, <laughs> if the jail's full, they're there. And, um, and, and so some people that could, could be helped significantly by, by drug and alcohol programs mm -hmm. Are simply they just are not availing there's themselves. no motivation it's easier to go to jail and get kicked okay so. now as far as the new jail goes obviously you can't build a new jail on its current footprint right where would the new jail be <coughs> actually for years the property uh, below the library mm -hmm. uh, coming down where those portables are uh, the road department in that area would be the courthouse and jail um, okay. We are looking at other properties, okay. uh, and if we can find a larger property, we would prefer building there because mm -hmm. it would make it easier for expansion in the future. But but right now we're guaranteed that that property, so we've got the ground, which puts us way ahead again in the okay. grant process. So um, uh, we're in good shape for ground. And as far as money goes, obviously in November. A measures a bond measure is coming up to help with the 25 percent grant match. We uh, we asked the board of supervisors to uh, place uh, Major J on the ballot uh, mm -hmm. for November. Uh, the board has certainly recognized 
the need for what we're trying to accomplish. Um, um, and basically it's a $31 million bond issue. Uh, it would be uh, placed uh, on, on properties uh, and, and the rate is $19 and some change mm -hmm. per 100,000 of assessed evaluation. We patterned it after the Calvers Unified School Bond that was successful here a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. The average amount that a property owner would pay over the life of the bond would be a little over $18 per 100,000 assessed evaluation. So and that's annually? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, as far as the new jail goes, I know that you have all your ducks in a row. You have the reentry program. You need to get the match, pro the match part of it. What goes into getting approval for a new jail? Uh, well, certainly. A I mean, big, without a the big, money part of it. <laughs> well, a, big, a, big, a big part of it's going to be based on need. Okay. Uh, we will, in December, we will receive a grant application. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll prepare that, and at some point in January, we will have to appear in front of the um, uh, Correction Standards Authority, mm -hmm. make a presentation on that, uh, lay out our need, our cost, our everything we can lay out. Um, and quite frankly, um, we believe, I believe personally, <laughs> that, that we're going to be successful. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the state sheriffs ran a very strong campaign. Even the governor has, has thrown us into a, a couple of uh, speeches that mm -hmm. they, they basically use Calaveras County as the poster child for the need of a new jail. <laughs> um, and, and I, I mean, I, Which I think, is good I and think, bad, I guess. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, but the only element that we're desperate for is the match, the 25% match. Okay. Uh, now, I do have to explain, if you'll give me a mm -hmm. second, exactly what the Major J, what that money would go for. Okay. We, we need $10 million for a match mm -hmm. to get the $30 million from the state because the jail is about a $40 million project. Okay. Um, along with that, we're asking the voters for 14 million to build all the buildings that need to be co-located with the jail, like the, the sheriff's office for the storage of records. The, the sheriff's office is the security for the jail. Uh -huh. And I, I don't know if you've ever been to our facility, but the oh, sheriff's I'm office- Oh, i taking a tour of your well, facility. <laughs> but, but see, the sheriff's <laughs> office and jail are, are they're just co-mingled. Yes, they but, are. But the state, won't pay for that side of it. They so we just have pay for the jail. Just for the jail. Okay. So that side of it we need to build ourselves. And mm -hmm. so fourteen million is dedicated for that. I mean that includes the dispatch center, emergency operating center, uh, housing for the deputies, the evidence records, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then there are six million dollars in the bond uh, specifically for infrastructure monies, uh, okay. and that's the sewer, water, roads, electricity, gas, all okay. those kinds of things. Um, so that's basically what the money will go for. There is one million dollars uh, figured into it for contingencies, and I mm -hmm. think that's oh, no. I'm sorry, it's, it's not like contingencies. Insurance it's insurance. Okay. It's insurance for the bond. Now it's my understanding that this new facility it will be built kind of on a pod principle. The jail will be built in a podular fashion where you can add pods. We, we have to build in the podular design, and if we don't, 20 years down the road, the next sheriff will be cussing us something horrible <laughs> because we don't want to put someone in a mm -hmm. position they have to build the whole new facility. We want them to be able to add pods and okay. add on, and, and we believe that um, uh, we can we can build a podular facility that will last Calaveras County uh, 40 years or more. Um, now, is the master sort of thought that the courts will move over right next to the jail facility? We are doing our best to co-locate mm -hmm. the jail and the courts. If we're not able to do that, now the, the courts uh, for Calaveras County mm -hmm. have gotten state money, it's in the state budget, mm -hmm. to fund the Calaveras County Courthouse construction. Now that's like a four or five year project, so, yes. so if we get, if everything like, works like we want it to work, we will be ahead of them, but, but, oh, but not, okay. not, too, not much. too much. 
we need to co-locate because if we don't, then we have to build in a transportation system to get people from the jail to court and back, and that's an ongoing, never-ending costs that okay. we don't want to want to take. So it's very important for us to, to co-locate. Okay. So it's a $31 million bond. Yes. And what is the life of the bond? 30 years, I believe. 30 years. Yes. So essentially $18 per $100,000 of assessed value. Yes. For 30 years. Yes. Okay. So people that are uh, protected by Prop 13 in their house is like 100000 <laughs> it's 18 bucks. Uh, for, well, that's uh, not bad. For, for others, it, uh, it increases. It's so. a little more. Yeah. Okay. And what is the cost that is sort of what I call being bled out of the Sheriff's Department now for turning people away? Um, I, I, I don't know that I can give you an exact cost. I, mm -hmm. I know that there are compounding costs, like the rearrests and, mm -hmm. and, and all those sorts of things. Um, I think it's more a cost to the community, and, and okay. it's a cost to, to the security and the lifestyle that we expect here in Calaveras County. Mm -hmm. When we put somebody in jail and the judge orders them to be there for a specific period of time, mm -hmm. and instead they're back out on the street making another victim, it, it's the quality of life issue, and I think it's a bigger cost for the community than it is, is us. I mean, it's an irritation and, it's a, and it demoralizes us to some extent, but, mm -hmm. but the real cost is the community. So it's an intangible almost, yes. intangible cost. And also you're giving tours, not you uh, personally, but some of your deputies <laughs> are giving we, tours. You know, we have set it up, this is, this is critically important to us, and we have set it up where Thursdays and Saturdays we do take individuals, community groups, church groups, fraternal orders, mm -hmm. whoever wants to uh, for a tour of the facility. Okay. And we have certainly had people at the start of the tour basically telling us that you know we don't need anything mm -hmm. and by the time we get them out the other end they're an advocate for us okay. we encourage people to come and see what it is we're talking about because I, I, I can tell people all day long how bad the jail situation is but when they see it it's 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 a done deal and we're almost out of time what time are those Thursday and Saturday tours I believe they're nine o'clock and if they would call okay. 754 Six five nine nine. We'll set them up. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on the program. I hey, appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. And thank you for joining us here on the Inside View. We'll see you again soon.